Last year, I reviewed an e-bike called the Onway, and I left it at that Onway because it didn't really have a model name, just some numbers and letters. A 36 volt, 350 watt fat tire folder, a nice little bike, though outpowered by others costing only a bit more. But as I said in that review, which I'll put a link to down in the description, you should watch it before you watch the rest of this one so everything makes sense. If you don't have a hundred extra dollars, that hundred may as well be a million. So even slightly underpowered, it found its audience. This year, that little Onway has evolved, or at the very least, gained a big brother. This new model even has a name, the Mini Plus. And it has some impressive specs, 750 watts and 48 volts. Also, it received some other Onway branded boxes that are add-ons to this new Mini Plus. And full disclosure, I was sent this bike to use for this review, but as always, all the opinions are my own. Based on my experience with the product, no one has scripted or previewed this video, and I don't accept payment for my reviews. That said, let's dig into this new bike, which as you can see, bears a striking resemblance to the older 350 watt version. And for good reason, because there are lots of shared parts. As far as I can tell, the beanstalk is exactly the same, along with practically everything up top. Like the grips, the twist throttle, even the Shimano Mickey Mouse trigger shifter, and the bell, which is not upside down anymore. And the same KD58C computer, it's no frills but easy to use and has all the needed functions to work, like 5 pedal assist speeds, in addition to a trip meter, a ride time meter, or is that rid time? Hey, if you're gonna rid some time, doing so on an e-bike is lots of fun. All the other usual displays, average speed, max speed, real time speed, and of course odometer. It also turns the headlight off and on, a headlight that's ever so slightly brighter. The head tube though, that starts some of the differences because it now has hard points welded to it and we'll see them in action shortly. Next is something spotted by a keen-eyed viewer on that last Onway review. When I said that the head tube logo looked like it was possibly Waves, they said that it looks like it says Onway but in a scripty sort of style. And I think that you, whoever you were, nailed it, so thanks. Moving below the head tube, the fork too has been modified, or at least sort of. It actually looks like the same fork, only it doesn't have preload adjustments now. Now just caps labeled partner, but it does get new branding. Longtime viewers may recall seeing the Ride Fork brand, because we've seen it before on the Mirax Finesse, only it's no longer Italian technology now, it's mysteriously USA technology. Mozo USA, but like that other ride fork whose website was a dead link, so too for USAMozo.com. Tires and wheels, the same as the 350 Onway, drilled orange rims with Chow Yang 20x4.0 knobby fatties. Most of the drivetrain also carries over, like the folding Welgo pedals and the large single chain ring. And behind the bottom bracket still sits the speed controller box, which is alloy. And like the older Onway, there's an exposed 12 magnet cadence sensor. There's a Quando hub for the front wheel with a quick release and the brakes, a slight upgrade. Still Tektro, but Tektro Aries for the Mini Plus. Plus, front rear with 160 millimeter rotors. To the rear, a Torni derailleur and a Shimano 7 speed freewheel, just like last time. The motor, though, big difference, both figuratively and literally. It's slightly wider to house the whopping 750 watts of power. The wider motor contributes to what I measured to be an ever so slightly bigger frame. Still the same aluminum, but it's a bit wider and minutely taller than before. This isn't easy to spot, but the folding latch is also different and stronger. 750 watts is gonna need more juice, and that's where the new battery comes in. 48 volts and 12.5 amp hours, which is 600 watt hours. And the saddle still folds forward for easy access. The battery still has the same huge charge port as last time, which I pointed out to Onway and they even responded. Said they had taken note of my observation, so I was surprised to see the same big port on this new version all the same functions. It's also very easy to remove. Now some people like an enclosed battery and it is a cleaner look, but this setup can't be beat if someone needs ease of access. Here are the new battery markings and the no tear off sticker. That's the rundown. Some holdovers, but now more power. More beef, at least in specs. But there's only one way to tell. Let's ride it and see what it's got. Now, I've said it before, but it's impossible to not have fun on an e-bike with 20-inch fat tires. That gives them a low center of gravity and it makes them nimble, which is odd considering the beanstalk handlebar with its vertical setup, but there's an around-town agility. 
I can't think of an urban environment aside from maybe riding down steps where this type of bike wouldn't be fun. They just go, and folders like this Onway with a suspension fork on top of the fat tires, they can go even off-road within reason. Now I've already said fun at least three times, but it's so applicable to this experience, especially with the new added power. But first, the speeds at each pedal assist mode. Pedal assist 1 through 5, starting at 1, 8 miles per hour. Then 12, 14, 17, and capping out at pedal assist 5, 20 miles per hour top speed. That's up from 18 before, but I can feel it's being limited electronically, so I asked why 20. And the good news is that they're updating all the new bikes to enable higher speeds, but I'm stuck with 20 for this review, both pedal assist and throttle. I tried to hack my way around it, getting into the bike's computer, but no dice. And that's limiting, at least for this review, but it's somewhat offset by all this bike's torque. No exaggeration, more instant torque than any e-bike I've ever ridden. And a flat screen doesn't relay this well, but there's a nice push when the throttle comes on and a subtle negative nudge when I release it. And that happens pretty much all the way up to its top speed. Most e-bikes have a heavy limit on torque because torque can get you in trouble, but not the Mini Plus. It wants to go and go full on. I can't imagine how great this would be without the 20 mile per hour cutoff, but top speed aside, I can kind of show you the raw power. Because there's a hill so steep that you can actually tell on camera, and that's rare. And this is only the second e-bike that can make it up this hill on throttle alone, and the Onway, it chugs right up at almost 10 miles per hour, actually over 10, because the speedo on this bike, it's very consistent, but the top speed, when it's showing 20, it's actually doing 22. Hidden speed. And here's my go-to benchmark, the longest consistently steep hill and consistently filmable hill downtown. Not only can I throttle only up this, but I can also let off, let the bike start to slow down, and re-throttle with acceleration going uphill. And here's the crazy part, even riding all these hills, which I've ridden all over town, I'm getting 20 miles per charge at throttle only. Only a few more when I go to pedal assist 5 at 25 miles. But so far, my max mileage was 40 miles on a single charge, and that was a mix of all the pedal assist modes using throttle to start off. So I'm confident that I could probably bore my way to 50 miles on a single charge if I stuck to pedal assist 1. One thing to note is this is a cadence sensor and rear hub drive bike, so at top speed and with all this power, it does run out of pedal. An example, here I am at or near top speed, and it looks like I'm pedaling with a nice cadence, but it's actually just a cadence. There's no resistance on the pedals. As a matter of fact, here's the same speed, the same flat ground, but you see I'm going significantly slower. So all I'm doing is keeping that cadence sensor on to let the power flow. If I quit pedaling, it turns off. There's also some cadence lag for turning the power off. About a half a second of power before the motor shuts it off, and about one revolution to turn it back on. And possibly you can also hear that 750 watt motor. On the 350 watt on way, it was near silent, or at least the motor disappeared under the roar of those knobby tires. This 750, however, it's a loud talker. And on throttle equipped bikes, I rarely shift gears, even when pedaling, because I can use the throttle off the line, so I just stay in the highest gear. But when I do need to shift, the Torney works as a Torney does. It's not super fast, but it is reliable. So you've gotten a taste, just a little idea of what it's like to ride this bike. It's very much like the 350 watt Onway, but with more power. Power plus an obnoxious amount of torque. But we're not done, because remember those extra boxes? They contain Onway accessories for this bike, and fully decked out, it doesn't look like a folder anymore. It looks more like a full-on utility bike. And this is where those head tube hardpoints come into play for the front rack. Well, actually, this is a front rack plus a basket. The basket mounts to the front rack, which mounts to the bike, and it can handle a 22 pound load up front. And I added this orange cargo net, I bought it off Amazon, link down in the description, because it matched the bike. But Onway has their own cargo net, perfectly sized for this basket, but I'm gonna keep the orange on, because it looks so good. The headlight moves to the front of the basket, via an underside mount. And the front fender kit mounts where the light used to be. The fenders are mostly hidden by the basket and the rack, but they do a good job shielding both me and the basket contents from water and debris. A little tweaking to fit the fender under the rear rack, but it works, and to my surprise it doesn't seem to hit the rack's light or tag mount. 
The rear rack, like the front, is metal and attaches to hard points already on the frame. Their website says a 35 pound capacity for the rear rack, but the rack itself says 25 kilograms, which is 55 pounds. Next is the rear rack bag, and I actually got this to use on the 350 watt Onway, and I thought they only sent me half of a pannier set, so I never opened it. And imagine my surprise when I discovered that it's actually the top bag for this rear rack. It secures via velcro straps and it's not going anywhere unless you want it to, in which case it's easy to move. There's storage all over this thing, because along with the carry handle up top, there are some web straps. On the front, one of the two D-clips for the included shoulder strap and then some velcro things for something. The entire bag is waterproof, including the main cargo area and the lid to open that hides a zippered mesh pouch. The cargo area is padded and has room for a six pack or eight pack and then some. The side pouches are waterproof too and Onway branded and are on the left and right side of the bag. On the rear, a reflective stripe, room for a water bottle and a zip cord. On the top tube, or only tube, I have the Onway top tube bag. And in pictures, this is always mounted up by the stem, but I found it fits better on the top of the carry handle. It has a water resistant phone case that velcros to the main bag section. And like the rear bag, there are small waterproof pockets on either side. And if needed, with the phone removed, I can still access the carry handle. And don't let the velcro scare you, it secures pretty well. 200 plus miles in and the phone hasn't budged. Not all the accessories you're seeing are from Onway. I'm known for putting bottle cages on the beanstalk of these folding bikes, like this one that I bought on Amazon, link down in the description. And since this is the year of crazy, I've used the bike's computer to hold some hand sanitizer. I don't think I've mentioned the tail light yet. This is a Blaze Light branded tail light, and it has three functions if you count off being one of the functions. And even with all this stuff added, access to the battery is unobstructed. The fold function, however, partially blocked by the front basket, so it looks less folded and more like it was hit by a bus. For people like me, though, that ride folding bikes we never fold, it's a completely different look, all accessorized. I've nicknamed it Basket Case. Now, I do need to say a fixed basket with a moving wheel underneath does mess with some people, but it doesn't bother me. Some people hone in on that optical illusion, but I have the feeling that riding more than just a few miles would clear it up. There is some added weight with all these accessories. The racks and everything adds about 15 pounds to the bike, which already weighs 57 pounds. But I haven't noticed any performance effects, so this 750 watt motor has breathing room. I like this bike, especially all dolled up with these accessories, but pricing, you know, performance has a cost. And in this case, it's $13.99. And that's for the bare bike. That doesn't include all the accessories. They're an added cost. Well, $13.99 minus $150, because they gave me a coupon code that gets you $150 off. It's KevGift100. I don't make anything off this. Just anyone that offers a coupon code that saves anyone money, I'm more than happy to share. I'll put the coupon code down in the description as well as links for all these accessories. And by the way, that rear rack, I'm told it works for the Rad Mini too. Comment below and let me know what you think about this new, more powerful Onway, the Onway Mini Plus. And also, if you're like me and you like the look of it with all its accessories, let me hear what you have to say. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're new here or if you just haven't subscribed already. And also, be sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified when there are new Kev Central videos like the next to come Project Comp V2 video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.